this is Razia teaching science. Now, till now in the previous classes we have discussed uniform motion and non-uniform motion. Isn't it children? Yes. So we have discussed uniform motion and non-uniform motion. What do you mean by uniform motion? Are you able to remember children? What do you mean by uniform motion? If a body travels equal distances in equal intervals of time, then the body is said to be in uniform motion. What is uniform motion, children? If a body covers equal distances in equal intervals of time, then the body is said to be in uniform motion. This is the topic we have discussed earlier. And I have given an example. If a train is traveling for every half an hour, it is traveling 80 kilometers. Next half an hour, 80 kilometers. And the next half an hour, 80 kilometers. The distance traveled and the time, it is traveling equal distances. That is 100, 100, 100, 100. For every half an hour, for every half an hour, for every half an hour means 30 minutes. For every 30 minutes, it is traveling 80 kilometers per hour. In first 30 minutes, it is traveling 80 kilometers per hour. Again in the next 30 minutes, it is traveling 80 kilometers per hour. Again in the next 30 minutes, it is traveling 80 kilometers. Again in the next 30 minutes, it is traveling 80 kilometers. That means, time is 30 minutes, 30 minutes. In the 30 minutes duration of time, it is traveling 80 kilometers. That means, equal time and equal distance. Equal distances are traveled in equal intervals of time. So, both are equal. If a body travels equal distances in equal intervals of time, then the body is said to be in uniform motion. Is it clear to you? Now, let us just record what, you, what we have learned in non-uniform motion. I have already given an example. If you are moving, if you are in a train, if you are in a train, that is, you are, for example, you are moving from Chirala to Paisa. In the first half an hour, that means in the first time duration, it is within 30 minutes, you are traveling 20 kilometers. Again, in the next 30 minutes, you are traveling 80 kilometers. In the first 30 minutes, you are traveling only 20 kilometers. You are traveling less distance. Why? When the train is moving from the junction, there may be so many obstacles. Or it cannot go fast. When the train is leaving the station, it cannot move that much fast. There may be some obstacles. Suddenly it cannot increase its speed. So it slowly increases its speed. And if there, are, if there may be any obstacles, it may stop. Is it clear? So that means the train is not moving at a perfect speed. Sometimes it is slow and sometimes it is fast. Depending upon the, depending upon the circumstances. Is it clear? Children? So, in the train here, when you are reaching from Chira, Chirala to Vaisak, in the first half an hour, you are traveling at 20 kilometers. Again, in the next half an hour, you are traveling at 80 kilometers. One it is, once it is reaching out of the station, near the station, there may be so many obstacles. There may be so many trains beside in the station, or there may be some children who are maybe some passengers who are crossing or there may be some obstacles because of that obstacles and it is near the judge it cannot go that much fast when it is out of the station when it enters into the main track when it enters into the main track then it fastens its speed so in the first half an hour it is traveling at only 20 kilometers and the next half an hour it is traveling Again, the next half an hour it is traveling 120 kilometers. That means for every 30 minutes duration of time, some, sometimes that is first half an hour it is traveling only 20 and next, next half an hour it is traveling 80 and so on. That means it is not that time is equal but the distances are not equal. So by this we can say or by this we can define what is uniform. 
Non uniform motion means how are you going to define non uniform motion? If a body covers equal distances in unequal intervals of time or unequal distances in equal intervals of time, then the body is said to be in non uniform motion. Is it clear to you? For example, when you are moving or when you are going to school on a bicycle. When you are in the near, when you are starting, for example, you are starting from your house. Your house, nearby your house, there are so many turnings. In the turnings or on the curved roads, you may not go that much fast. Why? Near the turnings, can you drive fast and near and it is a crowded place. It is a crowded place. Three hands. So one is the shortest one denotes a 
hour, hours, and longer one denotes minutes, and the red one, the other hand, it denotes seconds. Is it clear to you? So how many hands you have in a clock? You have here. Here you have three hands. Here you have three hands. What is? Seconds and hours. The shortest one denotes hours, and the longest one denotes the longer one denotes minutes, and the longest one with the red color it denotes seconds. Have you ever observed how the hands in a clock moves? Let us observe, especially the seconds. For every one second, it moves a little. Is it clear? To you? For every one second, for every one second, it moves a certain distance. Is it clear? To you? For example, zero point five. Ah, uh, for example, consider one centimeter. Is it clear? To you? Here, it covers one second. Again, in the next second, it is covering one second. One centimeter distance. Again, the next second it is covering one centimeter. For every one second, it is covering only one centimeter. Is it clear? To you? For the first second, it is covering one centimeter. For the next second, it is covering one centimeter. Again, the next uh, next second it is covering one centimeter. Now let us calculate these values in the table column. Here. I will write the. I will draw the tabular column for you, children. This is the tabular column. Okay, now. So this is the second sign. Second sign, and it is the distance. It is the distance traveled. It is the distance traveled. Now, consider the second sign is at twelve. Okay. So from twelve o'clock to twelve one second. So next second. So for one second, it is traveling one centimeter. How much distance it is traveling, children? One centimeter. Again in the next twelve to two. Twelve to two seconds. So that means twelve one to twelve two. What is the time duration? One second. For next second, it is traveling one centimeter. Again, twelve three, twelve three. That means next twelve three seconds. So what is the time duration? Twelve three seconds minus twelve two seconds. That is twelve one second. So that means what is the time here? What is the time duration? Twelve three seconds minus twelve two seconds. That is one second. So for one second, it is traveling one second. Again, again. Twelve four. Again at twelve four. In this twelve four seconds, what is the time duration? Nana, twelve four minus twelve three. That is one second. So for next second, for one second, it is traveling the distance of one second. Now look here. What is the time duration? For every one second, it is traveling one second. What is the distance covered? One second. For the next second, it is traveling one centimeter distance. Again, the next second, it is traveling one centimeter distance. Again, the next second, it is traveling one centimeter distance. That means here you see one second, one second, one second, one second. The time is second means time, time, and here it is distance. Time is equal one second. Is it clear, children? And here, yeah, distance also one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter. Distance is also equal. Is it clear, na? So, by this, I can say that is equal. And here, yeah, the distance is also equal. 
You can check it by using this chip. Is it clear to them? So, movement of hands of a clock is uniform motion. Next one. A boy, see here to the next one. A boy cycling. That means like a boy cycling means a boy is riding or moving on a bicycle. A boy is riding on a bicycle. Or a boy is riding a bicycle. Or a boy is moving on a cycle. So simply I have written a boy cycling in a crowded place. What do you mean by a crowded place, children? There are so many. There are so many. That means which are present on the road. There are so much students or man or woman standing or near by the road. Crowded means it is having huge number of people. Now. Huge number of people. There are so many people. Then we say that it is a crowded. Understood? When you go to the, especially the market areas, market, when you go to the market, we see it is crowded. Is it clear to them? Did you understand what you mean by crowded? Yes. Crowded means so many people are standing near. That is called crowded. Especially when you go for the vegetable market. There are so many huge number of people buying vegetables and leafy vegetables, fruits and so on. Is it clear to them? So that is a crowded place. In that crowded place, can you move fast? No, you cannot move. Why? You may hit some people. There may be or there might be an accident. So that's why a boy cycling in a crowded place. When he is moving in a crowded place, if there are no huge number People. If there are no huge number of people, he can move a little bit fast. If there are huge number of people on the road, he cannot move. So, if there are no people, he can move fast. If there are so many people standing on the road, he cannot move fast. He moves slowly. That, that means, he is moving sometimes fast and sometimes slow. That means, he may not have an equal He may not travel equal distances in equal intervals of time. So, then in such cases, we can say that a boy cycling in a crowded place is a non-uniform motion. How can you say that this is non-uniform motion? Here, the boy is not covering equal distances in equal intervals of time. Sometimes the distance covered will be more when there is no crowd. A boy cycling on a crowd, a boy cycling in a crowded place. As he is moving in a crowded place, he cannot move very fast. That means he may move very slow. Is it clear to them? So he moves very slow and sometimes he has to suppose to stop the cycle also. Is it clear? If there is a huge crowd, what is it going to do? He is going to just stop the cycle and stand there. Is it clear? In such circumstances, is he moving? No. So, we say that a small cycle in a crowded place is a non-uniform motion. Is it clear to them? So, a boy cycle in a crowded place is a non-uniform motion. Is it clear to them? How we can say that it is non-uniform motion? How we can say that a boy cycling in a crowded place is a non-uniform motion? Why? Because he is not traveling equal distances in equal intervals of time. He is not traveling equal distances in equal intervals of time. So that's why we say that the boy cycling in a crowded place is a non-uniform motion. Now let us see the next one here. Movement of a house fly. Have you ever seen a house fly? Especially it is in the 
very in the summer years, these house flies, especially uh, they sit on the dirty places, and those house flies they are moving. Are they moving? How are they moving? Are they moving? They are moving in random motion. Random means what do you mean by random motion? What do you mean by random motion? If a body moves in any direction or at any speed, sometimes fast and sometimes very fast, sometimes slow, sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes fast, next fast and then again slow. So such a type of motion is called random motion. And here the direction also changing always. Such a type of motions we say that they are in random motion. So, movement of a housefly, how does it move? It moves in a random motion. Random motion is however it wants. No perfect timing. Yes or no? No perfect distance travel. So, a body is traveling equal distances in unequal intervals of time or unequal distances in equal intervals of time. Then we say that such a body is moving with a non-uniform so, a movement of housefly is a non-uniform Next, the fan in a air cooler. Have you ever seen an air cooler? What is an air cooler? It gives, it gives cool air. Different from fan. Ceiling fan. It is different from ceiling fan. In the ceiling fan, we are getting hot air from the ceiling fan. And air cooler means we are putting some water. Because of that water, we are getting coolness. Is it clear? So, a fan in an air cooler running at fixed speed. It is, it is running at fixed speed. So, it is traveling equal distance. The fan it is traveling equal distances for every one second or for every two seconds. So, a fan in an air cooler running at fixed speed. The fan in an air cooler running at a fixed speed it is following or it is under uniform motion. Why? Because it is traveling equal distances in equal intervals of time. Here, the fan is moving in a uniform speed. Why the fan is moving in a uniform speed? If a body travels equal distances in equal intervals of time, such a body is said to be in uniform motion. For every one second, it is moving one rotation. That means, for example, what is the rotation? If, for example, it is traveling complete rotation, that is 360 degrees, the total is, for example, 10 centimeters. For one rotation, it is moving 30 centimeters. Next rotation, it is moving 30 centimeters. Again, the next rotation, it is moving 30 centimeters. For every one rotation, it is moving 30 centimeters. So that means, for equal distances, it is moving 30 centimeters, it is moving. For every one second, it is moving 30 centimeters. For every one second, it is moving 30 centimeters. For every one second, it is moving 30 centimeters. Is it clear, sir? So, for every one second, it is moving 30 centimeters. That means, equal distances in equal intervals of time. Then such a body is said to be in a uniform motion. So, how can you say that it is a uniform motion, children? Here, the body is traveling equal distances in equal intervals of time. So, such a body is said to be in uniform motion. Next, a train entering into a railway station. When the train is entering into the railway station, the train driver has to reduce his speed. Is it clear, sir? As the train is with us, as the train is running or coming with a large speed, huge speed, when it is coming into the station, he has to decrease his speed. He has to decrease his speed. When the train is entering into the station, when the train is entering into the station, or when the train is leaving the station, the train driver is in the lowest speed. He maintains in 
lowest speed. Is it clear to you? Why? Because all of a sudden the train will not stop. He has to slowly decrease his speed. He has to slowly decrease the train's speed. So he decreases the speed. Not all of a sudden. He has to not. He should not apply.
Thank you.